Now, let's get down to business and to our first session. Our first session is on smart cities in the metaverse. The session is co-organized with Science. Science, the Center of Excellence, formerly known as RISE, is the Research and Innovation Center of Excellence in Cyprus, focusing on interactive media, smart systems, and emerging technologies, aiming to empower knowledge and technology transfer in the region. It is a joint venture between the three public universities of Cyprus, University of Cyprus, uh, Cyprus University of Technology, and the Open University of Cyprus. Uh, the Municipality of Nicosia and two renowned international partners, the Max Planck, Planck Institute for Informatics, Germany, and the University College, London, United Kingdom. Technology is constantly transforming every aspect of our lives, from healthcare to mobility to food, including how we complete simple everyday tasks. Interconnectivity and fact-based planning are more crucial than ever in the current resource-scarce world. The panel will introduce the current state of the Nicosia Smart City Initiative, its connectivity to the metaverse and the political, economic and technological possibilities it brings along. Please welcome on stage Roro Alexandrinou, Public Affairs Advisor, Red Wolf PR and Advertising Agency, and uh, she will be moderating um, the panel. Olga Shvarova, Chief Innovation Officer, Science, Andreas Panayi, Guinness's Ventures, and Kostandinos Yorkadis, Mayor of Nicosia. For all the stage is yours. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank Good morning. you morning. Uh, for participating morning. in this uh, the discussion. So, um, I will start with uh, the mayor of uh, Nicosia. What is the overall vision of science and uh, Nicosia as a smart city? Well, uh, for, first of all, uh, for the people that don't know, science is a research center. Uh, cooperation between UCL, Max Planck, and the three state universities in Cyprus. And it's situated on the buffer zone in the center of our historic city. The choice to situate it where it is is extremely important because one of our strategic themes in trying to rejuvenate the old part of town is to invest in state funds, municipality funds, European funds in order to attract permanent uses such one of them being uh, universities and research centers in the center of town. We have achieved the particular aim and science formerly known as RISE, has been operating for some time now. This shows uh, that cities are an extremely, extremely important vehicle that states or central governments can use in order to disseminate uh, policies much more effectively, or European funds much more effectively than the state itself. And science is proof of this success. Very importantly, uh, other than science comes with two uh, major targets, aims, if you wish. Other than what I have just said, the, our aim to rejuvenate the area near the buffer zone, which is achieved by simply having the use there, the center there. The main purpose of science is transfer of knowledge. Transfer of knowledge from our advanced partners, being UCL and Max Planck, to our local universities, the University of Cyprus, uh, the TEPAC, the, the Technical University, and the Open University. In turn, our local universities have an aim to transfer this knowledge, this research knowledge, through innovation to uh, businesses, startups, and to the economy at large. And lastly, through what we have come to uh, call science diplomacy, uh, science is mandated to, uh, to offer services to businesses from all communities in Cyprus and to hire researchers and staff and, uh, uh, and personnel from all communities of Cyprus. It is an extremely inclusive center because we believe that science research uh, needs the help of all people available on the island because probabilities to uh, invent something, to innovate something, increase, increase dramatically as numbers increase. 
Uh, so through science diplomacy, mm -hmm. we're trying to build trust between everybody and all communities in Cyprus. We're trying to transfer knowledge from amazing advanced partners that have proven themselves throughout the decades into our local universities and through our local universities to the business and the economy at large. Okay, so that's the vision, Ms. Sreva. What is the, the metaverse aspect of uh, the smart city? Excuse me, I would also like to say, yes. and that's the good part of, of being the mayor or the president of the board, because I have just explained the vision, and Olga and Panayotis need to implement it. They have the, the very difficult task <laughs> of implementing it. So, thank you. Uh, Indeed, the task is not easy. And thank you, that's an excellent question. Um, the metaverse and an Uber twin of the city are two different things, but they have a common uh, overlapping. They, they merge. And metaverse can be seen as a gigantic ecosystem application that is enabled by artificial intelligence, by the IoT, the big data, the extended reality where our research focus lies. And we see it as an idea of a hypothetical parallel virtual environment that incarnates the way of living in a real city within virtually inhabitable space. Metaverse can be seen thus as a transition from smart cities to virtual cities and a new target of the city governments to obtain new goals and that can be used to improve the quality of life of a citizen they can be used to improve the participation of the citizen, citizens in the governance of their own areas of the city in decision making and in, uh, how to say, it's in creating a new connection, very new connection between the citizen and their city or their town. So when we speak about metaverse, we usually tend to think about the new world, the digital world, digital incarnations that bring us this technocratic vision of, of urbanity, the algorithmic mode of governance, which we believe is more efficient than the uh, sort of old-fashioned traditional ways. This is positive in many ways, uh, though it raises some concerns over the risks and impacts of the surveillance technologies that have been rapidly and massively deployed in many countries after the pandemic. So there is a bright new side of the uh, metaverse deployed within the uh, urban twin or a digital city, but there is also a potentially dark side to it. And these concerns also relate to the architecture, global architecture of the computer mediation of the metaverse and its benefits, as well as control and commodif commodification mechanisms that allow to monitor, predict, control and trade the behavior of citizens within the city. So the emergence of Metaverse as a computing platform is, is a blessing and it is also uh, a risk. And the policymakers need to not just embrace the vast potential that the Metaverse gives us for increasing the ways the citizens can interact with a digital city, but also understand and assess the ramifications of its wide adoption, as well as to help the citizens to make informed decisions about how to use the digital twins and how to use the Metaverse uh, in their everyday activities. Of course, when it actualizes, which will be in a few years and gives us enough time to consider all these questions, all the risks and address them. So, uh, Mr. Herr what is the, the technology now behind Metaverse? Hi, uh, thanks for uh, having me here. Actually, you would expect Anthony Steed to be here, but unfortunately he had to cancel his flight. So I'll try to replace him as uh, the best that I can. So um, to me, the metaverse is basically the merging of the physical to the with the digital world. So basically what we want to do is we want to integrate uh, informatics in the physical space that people live in. And our goal is to both um, help people that live in the cities, but also respect the environment and the cities that these people live in. So in order to do that, we need to understand the relationship between people and the environment. So that means basically uh, collect data. And to collect data, what we need to do is we need to uh, put sensors uh, in several places of uh, the environments that we live in. So these sensors can be used to collect data about temperature, uh, about uh, concentration of dust, uh, traffic, uh, people, etc. So this is a huge amount of data. So that means that in order to do that, you, we need to innovate in how we collect this data, 
on the hardware that we need to implement to, to collect this data, on how we store this data, and how we process this data. And of course, in order for us to be able to process this data and get insights of what they mean, we need to develop new methods. And these methods will be uh, basically AI techniques. So the AI, the modern AI uh, technologies are basically uh, methods of, uh, of learning out of data. It's machine learning. Now, um, uh, so besides that, remember our goal is to help people and to respect their privacy and everything. So that means that we need to do research and innovate in how we, um, uh, we, we collect this data, de-anonymize it, uh, process it, and store it, respecting the privacy of, of people. Now, obviously, the more data you have and the more analysis you do, you, do, you have to somehow be able to communicate this to the people. So that means you need to develop new innovative uh, vi uh, visualization methods and approaches to communicate that. So that means uh, research in computer graphics, using virtual reality or augmented reality, which are technologies that allow people to have more natural interaction with the data and the environment. Um, uh, or uh, uh, maybe develop new uh, ways that you know, the current trend is using mobile devices where you touch things and you, 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 know, you have this natural interaction, but obviously when you have more data, you might need to use your, your whole body. So you could, for example, you would like to immerse yourself in a digital twin of the city, move in the city and explain what data or whatever means to other people, or maybe even understand it. Um, obviously, we cannot be just talking about technological uh, innovations we should also be considering social sciences and um, uh, um, artists. And why do, I, why do I say that? Because obviously we need to understand how people uh, live in cities and we need to understand how, uh, what they desire from these cities. So social sciences can give us a different insight of, uh, uh, of what, what these data mean and uh, these tools mean. And of course, artists have a, a different way of communicating with people. Okay, obviously they have like uh, a different way of viewing the world, but also a different way of expressing or communicating their feelings or something to, to people. So it's not just technological uh, innovations, but I believe it's, 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 it's a very interesting era for many sciences to come together to innovate, to, 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 to create new uh, advances uh, with the metaverse. Yeah. So, Mr. Baker, you said that uh, Ms. Svarova and Mr. Haralambos will implement the vision, but you, you also need funds. So, Mr. Panagi, <laughs> what is the value of Metaverse from an investor's perspective? It's a loaded question. <laughs> but before, before I get into that, yes. let, me, let me give you a, a perspective, a, a view that uh, I think you, you can see where I'm coming from. I, I, I spent most of my career, all of my career in the United States, the last 40 years. And most of it was in uh, early 90s, late 80s. Most of you were not. Some of you were not even around. So I was fortunate that I saw the evolution of the internet. That was part of my job, was to consult with companies on how to evolve in the space of technology. Back in the day, we didn't have computers, believe it or not. We actually used paper and pen. So your question, it's like asking me now, what somebody would ask me in 1992, 93, when the web was commercialized, would you invest in the internet? My answer is yes, but metaverse is the same thing, okay? And let me roll back. When you go home, or not now, because you should pay attention, Google Second Life. Go to, go to YouTube and find Second Life. Second Life was metaverse about 20 years ago avatars running around, talking, dealing, doing. We were selling real estate on, uh, for one of our clients, a real estate company, so they, had a, they went and they bought you know, real estate and they were selling it to avatars. So 20 years ago, the concept of metaverse was called Second Life. Why didn't it take off? Because technology wasn't there, people were still confused. So what is metaverse? And I'll get to whether I invest or not. We, we would invest or not. Um, 
as if you look at it from a technology point of view and business, um, sure, I want to rush in and invest in the next big thing. If you look at it, you know, oh, sorry, as, as a developer, I want to develop the next thing. I want to have fun with the research and it's great stuff. You look at it as an investor and I'm responsible for my own money and not other people's possible money. Uh, when you invest, you need to cut through the BS and the fluff. Uh, and find something that you're actually investing in that will be part of the evolution of, an, of a human experience uh, with technology. Because that's what the metaverse, call it whatever you want to call it, 3.0, 4.0, 5.0, metaverse, second life. At the end of the day, we're coming close to the next evolution of how humans interact with technology, how technology is immersive in, in our social lives, our business lives. So. My answer, we already invested in three companies that may potentially be part of the evolution of the experience between humans and technology. Uh, and you know, so yes, and they, they are Cyprio companies. Uh, so yes, we have them, uh, for the doubtful. Um, this is so, very good to hear. I'm sorry? This is very good to hear. Yes, and we have a lot more. We just have to find them and capitalize them. Uh, Ms. Varva, what is science currently doing in Metaverse? So, at science, we have been working with the urban digital twin concept for a while, and we see digital twin as a replica of the complexity of processes and functions and interactions within the city. We have two main um, aspects of the urban digital twin that we're researching. One is a 3D platform, and that is where Panayotis comes in, as he is the researcher who is who is leading this effort currently. Uh, the 3D platform is uh, an accurate digital replica of, of the city, of its buildings, of its streets, and it allows uh, the researchers not just to look at the structure of the city, but also to model uh, the interactions of crowds within the city, to model the traffic flows, and uh, uh, the way the shadows fall, for example, uh, when the new building is, is planned, we can recreate the new building within the old city landscape and see what will happen, as it's much easier to visualize the implications. Um, it would be best to, to uh, ask Panayotis to talk a little bit more about the 3D platform aspect of the city. Uh, the second aspect that we have is uh, a data lake. And the data lake is a centralized repository that allows to store all structured and unstructured data coming from any sources. So all the city sensors, from uh, parking sensors to lighting sensors to cameras, generate a lot of information of different types. And uh, the digital city requires uh, a repository where this data can be collected, it can be indexed, sorted, and interpreted. So it can be visualized or used for research, or used to um, make the, the uh, better decisions on the city planning, on the city governance. And this kind of uh, environment around, uh, allows to run different types of analytics, from dashboards to visualizations to big data processing, real-time analytics, machine learning, as uh, this is a very important part of uh, management of vast amounts of data, unstructured data that comes from, from the city sensors. We're also looking at the concept that's in a very early stage development of uh, the use of a specially designed digital currency within the city environment, limited to the city itself, as if uh, the city was a closed system, which can help with the payment solution of uh, the divided city of Nicosia. And this is a very complex problem, but one which would greatly benefit the citizens of Nicosia on the both sides of the divide if we manage to find a way to utilize technology to solve the payments problem. And if this solution, the payment solution is designed and implemented, it could also be used with a metaverse environment, of course, for gamification and to enable tourists to interact with the city in a deeper way. So the, I would say the two main aspects and a concept that we're exploring currently at Science, how to uh, bring Metaverse closer to us here in Nicosia. So, uh, Mr. Herlamos, would you like to elaborate and explain what iNicosia is? Um, yeah, we should have a video playing. A video, please, yes. Yeah. yes. So, um, 
Nicosia is basically a digital twin of the city of um, Nicosia. It's basically, um, what you see here is basically a part of the digital twin which we uh, basically released for the Cyprus Forum. It's, it basically shows in high detail the areas where the Cyprus Forum is being organized. So the digital twin basically uh, has a very rich 3D reconstruction of the city that includes historical buildings like Castelliodisa or the walls of Nicosia. Uh, it has, um, it's, it's targeted to be connected with the smart city platform that the municipality is currently building. So the city currently is building, is, is placing lots of sensors all over the city and we are integrated with that so that we can visualize this data in the rich 3D reconstruction of the city. Um, we envision this platform to be something that is gonna be a point of reference, not just for Cyprus, but for the whole world. We believe that we have the capabilities and the, uh, and the, the people to, to be able to do that. Um, so, um, um, basically with, with this digital twin, we, we, we envision that, we, we think that this project here is currently metaverse ready in what, whatever metaverse means, because I agree with what was said before, you can call it second life, metaverse, web three or whatever, but we believe that this is uh, ready for that. It's going towards the right direction. Um, and uh, we, we, we also envision novel applications built on top of this 3D model, not just for communicating data, but also for artistic expression, for computer games or whatever. This platform is gonna be open we're going to release uh, APIs and the data to everybody to use. So we envision people from several companies or startups or whatever to, to get access to this and be able to, uh, to, to build solutions, novel solutions, uh, on top of our platform. So, yeah, so Anikosia is basically a digital twin of uh, our, our city, and we envision this to become sometime iCyprus or whatever. Yeah. The next step. The next step. I yeah. Cyprus is the next step. Uh, if you want, you can explore uh, after we finish and during a break. You can visit our stand. We have both the video, but also an interactive version of this, where you can explore this on a mobile device or a computer, because this one runs in real time in, uh, in several devices. So please visit us. Uh, and vi it's important for, for us, uh, for the team, to interact with people uh, to get ideas and maybe potential collaborations. Yeah. So, Mr. Panayi, would you invest in metaverse startups? Uh, Mr. Halabus um, mentioned startups. Will you keep investing in metaverse? The, I, we 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 don't we don't look at things by sectors or industries or we look at you know holistically. Uh, technology companies, biotech companies, uh, SaaS companies, technology companies. If it makes sense within the strategy of, of a portfolio, you do. Again, I, I'm, I, don't, I try not to define things by, you know, uh, uh, conceptual words. Uh, you got to look at commercial value. You got to look at uh, return investment. If you look at things from an investment point of view, you look at it from a technologies and business and consulting, sure, you know, you, you want to dive into anything impossible. But when you look at investment, you have to make sure that, um, and you're never going to be sure, because if you were, then they wouldn't need your capital. You have to make sure that you do your work to figure out how things would one day fit together in a commercial, uh, in a commercial way. There are technologies that will happen for the other purposes, for social purposes, for betterment of life purposes, but again, from an investor point of view, you have to look at commercialization. So the answer is yes, but there's a lot of variables. Would you like to make a comment, Mr. Mayor, before we close this well, discussion? I think Mr. Panay is being very polite. <laughs> he, 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 he actually, uh, is not touching the major issue that probably prevents him in investing as much as he would like to, which is namely the difficulty in cooperating with anything that has to do with the government or state organizations or state universities. Uh, correct? Spot on. 
we have uh, a serious issue. I mean, uh, in the past years, Cyprus has been extremely successful. Uh, and its researchers uh, and its academia have been extremely successful in uh, winning six, if I'm not mistaken, competitive bids for center of excellences throughout Europe. That's amazing uh, if you consider our per capita, uh, if you consider it and compare it per capita. The hope was and still is that uh, some of these centers will become viable and sustained for a longer period of time that the Horizon 2020 programs entail. To do that, we need private investment. And private investment is difficult uh, when there are very, very strict laws governing private investment for research in universities, especially the state universities, especially the relationship of private enterprise, the, 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 um, the professors, the researchers themselves, and the centers. Uh, and also the speed. Probably a private in investor would like to get in and get out at the speed and time they so choose. It's not straightforward in cooperating with the Center of Excellence today uh, in Cyprus or with the University in Cyprus. That's an extremely complicated issue. Uh, and if we want private investment to blossom in relation to uh, research and the centers of excellence or research at large, a lot of laws uh, and procedures have to, have to change. So that's one uh, obstacle in getting private funding. The second, uh, as I said before, our research center is unique. It's very different than any other research center or center of excellence. Uh, and what differenti differentiates us is that we have taken upon ourselves a second role, not only the technical, the research role, but the one that I described before as science diplomacy, the one that we want to incorporate and be totally uh, inclusive of all potential researchers and innovators in Cyprus, because numbers matter in research and in innovation. To do that, we also face two uh, main obstacles. One is timing. We need more time to make science diplomacy work, and that's why we have requested ex additional funding from the European Union and from the government of Cyprus, and we, ma and we hope uh, we will get it, and also from esteemed and very, very successful embassies and uh, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, going to name any embassies, uh, but w we need help. We need support in order to extend uh, the period uh, of uh, viability of, of our center. And the second part uh, um, is if we are going to be all inclusive, we need to be able to hire people uh, uh, at ease. At the moment, there is great difficulty uh, hiring Turkey Cypriots at the center or offering services to Turkey Cypriot companies. And that is an issue if we want to be all inclusive in relation to research. So we should stop sabotaging ourselves then in Cyprus? Uh, I think, uh, I don't think we're sabotaging. I think uh, uh, we are running behind uh, events and we need to uh, run a little bit faster. So, Mr. Panay, you said uh, the Mr. Mayor was on spot, yes? The yes, it's spot on, and we can have, you know, five of this, you know, uh, five hours of this discussion. I think he's, he's, he's right in so many, many ways. The only thing I will say, which is more relevant to, to this, uh, without dissecting, this is my own personal opinion, which we only started doing business in Cyprus about three and a half years ago, four years ago. We came to explore, and we found what we thought is, will happen. Contrary to what others said, what, are, what the hell are you doing in Cyprus? Uh, we found seven phenomenal Cypriot companies uh, that we work with. We work with them on acceleration, and now they're part of the portfolio. There's plenty of them. There's many very smart people in Cyprus. But as the mayor said, there's a lot of, there's a lot of speed bumps and issues that need to be removed to reach a scale that would actually bring other investors in. 
And there's the government is setting up an equity fund, so there will hopefully some be some more funds. I do believe others will follow. There will be more capital, uh, but capital alone is not going to do it. You need to release some of the restrictions, whatever those are. I'm not going to get into it. The mayor knows best. Um, so those that can invest can invest, and we can just leave it at that. And then blossom. Blossom was a, was a very nice word that you used, uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Panagi, Mr. Haralambos, Ms. Farova, and Mr. Mayor, thank you so much thank you for, for joining us. this discussion. And you, you, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies, gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you.